Welcome to Dodgers Daily. I'm Casey Porter. I'm so glad that you decided to tune in. We have a very, very, very special guest tonight, and I love talking to baseball players that just simply know how to play the game, so I'm so excited to talk to Austin Gothier tonight. Austin, welcome in. Thank you for having me. Okay, man, we're going to talk about your game, and we're going to break all this down, and I know your game is not its not predicated on the home run, that's for sure, <laughs> but, but, man, how about... How about your first home run as a professional, right? We're going to talk about that. It was a walk-off to give the Quakes an 11-10 to 10 win. I've got to know all about that experience. Yeah, that was, I mean, that was a special moment. I guess you could say there's almost not another situation that you want to hit your first home run in, especially for a win. I mean, to get a win, a, te- a good team win. Um, but it was special, man. Um, adding off of that, there was a coach there that usually isn't there. Uh, Blake Galen. I don't know if you've heard of him. Mm-hmm. Um, he used to be in the Dodgers organization. And we were talking about, this came up weeks later after that situation happened. And um, he knew every pitch that happened that entire bat. It was kind of a long at bat. Yeah. He knew every single pitch, the takes, the foul balls. And that kind of struck me in a way of how the Dodgers run things. Like they're bought, their coaches are bought in here and like they'll do whatever it takes to win. So I really found that that was my first realization of the Dodgers organization right there. Okay. So let's go back to your South County days there in Virginia, obviously a great career there at, at, I believe they call it SoCo as the, the, uh, (laughs) the short way of saying that. So talk about your career there at South County. Yeah. So honestly, the journey started before South County. I grew up with those kids since little league. I was with the probably a core six or seven of those guys starting at, 10, 11 years old. So just being able to go through that journey with them, starting at the big field and in at South County, um, it was it was a good time at South County. We did we won a lot of games. I mean, not enough. We, I don't think we won a championship there, but just having those core group of guys there and that's kind of where the foundation started and where like I maybe thought there was a chance to play pro ball. That's kind of where it first like clicked a little bit. But yeah, like I said, just a great core of guys and they will always be special in my in my heart so yeah no doubt so you you got recruited by several different schools William and Mary being one of them obviously very you know the educational like I said the educational aspect of it was very important to you so what was the connection to Hofstra how'd you how'd you end up there so there was a kid so I played in a travel ball organization called the stars and there was a pitcher I mean, I'm just going to name drop him, James Beasley. Um, he yeah. was he played in the same organization as I did, and he was f- the first to go there. So he was there a couple of years before me, and you know, I had those schools. They're very interested. It was just wasn't the right fit, I guess you could say. Sure, sure. And so uh, we had a scout come down from Hofstra to watch me play for a weekend, and it happened on a Sunday, right when the tournament ended, and they offered me right on the spot, and I was just like. I took some time. We took some time and really looked at who was like on the roster. When would I like be able to step on the field and get that playing time? And honestly, it was the right it was the right fit for me. Um, I was fortunate enough to get playing time as a freshman. So, and you don't hear about that much, but yeah. it was awesome. I mean, it was a great experience. I loved. I hated it at first. I didn't like Kafka at first, yeah. but um, logically, it was the right reason to stay there, and I'm so glad I did. Okay, I want to back. I've I talked about how excited I am because you know you're my kind of player, <laughs> tough, gritty, hard nosed. In high school, okay, you started 83 consecutive games at at South County, okay, and then at Hofstra, you started 144 out of 145 <laughs> games. So obviously, being hard nosed, tough, gritty, and being in the lineup is important to you. So talk about. You know, just how important it is you to be in the lineup every day and why that is for you? Yeah, I would, I, I mean, I, would, I have to say it's a reflection of the people that are close to me in my life. Um, growing up in military parents, I mean, you learn about work ethic, discipline, and without those two things, I mean, who are you as a player or a person? And if you don't have either of those things, where are you going? And there's no place I'd rather be, you know, I mean, I want to be on the field all nine innings throughout the season as long as I can with being healthy. Um, I think that's what drives me to every day. Um, I don't want to have that feeling of watching on the sidelines or in the dugout. I want to be out there in action 
in producing ways to make the team win. So, yeah, no doubt. I've got I've got a cool quote, and and I'll wait till I release the article that I'm going to write on you All after right. this interview. But a, a cool quote from your hitting coach, Derek Great Lakes, who also went to Hofstra, and then John Rooney, left-handed pitcher for the Tulsa Drillers last year, he went to Hofstra as well. So, did you guys kind of trade some stories there? Oh yeah, we he actually played for the same coach I did. Okay, very uh, good. Yes, yeah, John Russo. So yeah, we shared some stories back and forth. It was on. It was honestly nice having him there just so we could like almost build that connection, especially when you're going up, changing environments. It was just nice to talk about those old times with somebody. Yeah, no doubt. And I'm sure that, you know, that, that baseball is such a web of – it makes the world such a small place because it's like you're oh. from here and you're from there and from everywhere. And then all of a sudden you have all these links and connections and it just makes everything seem smaller. But, okay, another cool moment. You got to hit you, you hit over four hundred in twenty twenty, which that wasn't that was cool, but not cool in the sense that you had to shut the season down after fourteen games. I'm sure that was yeah. frustrating. But you got to play in a summer league that summer after your twenty twenty season, you got to play with your brother oh, yeah. for your dad <laughs> and win the championship, didn't you? Yes. I that honestly there was not a better time for that to happen yeah. just with COVID happening and it honestly just slowed everything down. So I mean, we're. All, I mean, with the younger brother, we're always on go, 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 and traveling all over. So, just to have that happen right down the street from us in the Virginia League was something special. I mean, you can't complain when you're playing for your dad and your yeah, little brother, no and you have your little brother on your side, and you win a championship. So it was pretty cool. Okay, so you have the great career there at Hostra, and although you hit over 400 the year of 2020. You still don't get drafted, which I know how competitive you are. Just I don't know you very well. It's the first time I ever <laughs> talked to you, but just watching you play, talking to your coaches. Like I said, I got a quote from Dylan I think that you like whenever you see it. So take us to the range of emotions of being disappointed about not getting drafted from that going to being excited, signing with the Dodgers and how all that happened. You know, that was a roller coaster of a day. Yeah. I'll that. <laughs> You know, starting off, I mean, usually people hear before the draft when they're getting taken, I believe. That's what I found out after. I had, I had no idea how it all worked. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, I mean, it was tough. I was watching the draft. I remember where I was. I was in my basement just watching the draft, just seeing it go on. It was like the 18th and the 19th and 20th came around, and I didn't hear my name call. And um, I think anybody in that situation, it would feel like a gut punch almost because yeah. you just – you want that one chance and I mean it could have been probably 30 minutes to an hour after the draft ended I get a call from Will Rimes the uh farm director he's like hey man you know like we were watching your whole draft but you know you know how these things are but we're we have a free agent deal for you like would you like to take it and I was like Oh my goodness. <laughs> where, <Yeah. did> I have- <laughs> where do I sign? <laughs> yeah. It's like, where do I- okay. I actually, I had, I was like, I got to talk to my parents real quick. Like, cause I was signed to go to Maryland for my fifth year. Um, Are you and, and Bubba pretty close? Bubba. Uh, we started to right when he got out, yeah. right when he got out here. So yeah. we hit it off right away. But yeah, yeah, it was probably that night. I was just like, yeah, uh, I'll sign right now. (laughs) (laughs) And then I think the next week they flew us out here and we just got to work. Okay, let's talk about the type of offensive game. And I I have fallen in love with the way that you play offense. You use what I call the big part of the field. You love hitting the ball (laughs) to the middle of the field. And as a matter of fact, I don't know if you even know this, but your oppo percentage as a professional so far it's higher than your pull percentage, which to me is just amazing. You hit about twice as many ground balls as you do fly balls. I've got to know who taught you how to hit because I just love your approach as a hitter. Your on-base percentages are always over 400. It's 439 so far as a professional. You hit the ball up the middle. You hit the ball the other way. You're based on putting the ball in play. You're a tough out every time you get out. So i got to know how you learned how to hit, who taught you how to hit, and tell me all about that. I have to give my man, Coach Wes, a shout out. He's okay. actually at Wake Forest now. He was at Hofstra. He was the hitting coach at Hofstra when I was there, but now he's at Wake Forest. Um, he, I owe a lot to him and how he taught me to be in the box and how to almost pick apart the pitcher and how I can win against that guy and dominate him. Because there's things sometimes the pitchers are telling you that they're going to throw you. And it's just, are you willing to look close enough? 
And I mean, that's just the approach part and just other ways you can win. But yeah, he taught me so much, man. I could go down a, a rabbit hole just talking about it. But he, I mean, he, we talked about, okay, what are your strengths? What are your weaknesses? Yeah. Let's work on your weaknesses in the off season. We'll start tweaking that, but let's focus on your strengths when it gets to the season. Uh, we're going to, we're going to pick an approach if you're feeling this type of way today, let's think this way. You know, it's kind of just a a chess game, as you will. Yeah. But he was big on approach and just driving the ball to the gaps. But we're also going to swing at our pitch, if that makes sense. Um, yeah, no we're doubt. Not gonna, we're not going to give that pitcher any chance to make us look. You're going to get fooled, but we're not going to give him a chance to even think that he could. Yeah. So – it's just being very selective, I guess, in a shorter term. Just be selective and do damage on your pitch. Yeah, you know that you sound, you know, and talking about a professional, the reason why your game has translated so well from college to professional, you know, the first thing that you really have to learn as a professional is swing decisions. If you don't swing at the right pitches in professional baseball, you are not going to hit the ball. And then whenever you do get your pitch, you can't miss it, right? <laughs> exactly exactly and those are the ones you want to do damage on yeah no doubt okay so talk about you know your on base percentage we'll get to your fielding percentage here in a minute so impressed again over 400 at Hofstra so far 439 yeah, as a professional so talk about the pride that you take just figuring out a way to get to first base yeah I mean that's I think that's a part of the game where I think that's one of my strengths um but it's really kind of just studying the pitcher. We'll go back to that. Just studying the pitcher. What's his end zone strike percentage? Is he going to throw strikes that day? It's kind of almost, I want to learn about him and yeah. how I can take advantage of that. So it's more on the scouting report side for sure. But yeah, I mean, just find a way. That's what they, that's, that's what they say. Just find a way to get on base. <laughs> this is a great teaching moment because we always tell kids, hey, man, you got to pay attention when you're on deck. You got to pay attention when you're yeah. in the dugout. And you got to figure all these things out before you get up to home plate, right? Yeah, I got I to gotta say it starts probably in the double hole or even the whole game. I mean, you got to see you got to see what pitches he is locating, which ones he's throwing for strikes, which one is he not throwing for strikes, and say my strength is to hit curveballs like – if he's throwing it in there, just dropping in there, I'm going to sit that pitch. Yeah, and I'm going to I'm going to try and do something with it. So yeah, fantastic. It's simple, but it's not. You got to stick to it. That's the hardest part. <laughs> yeah, no doubt. It can be simple. It can be as simple as you want to make it, or as complicated as exactly. you want to make it. But okay, your fielding percentage nine eighty three. I know that you've grown up playing shortstop. You played shortstop at Hofstra, but you played a lot of second base for Great Lakes, and so far as a professional. So first of all. Where do you think you profile and talk about, you know, your fielding percentage and, and how you became such a good fielder? I would say I think I profile as a second baseman. Okay. But I love playing shortstop. I mean, yeah, that's just my yeah. – that's my passion. I Grew up idolizing most, Derek Jeter, is that correct? Oh, yeah. He's – Okay. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah I'm, I'm so comfortable at shortstop. But I would say fielding is not really one of my strengths and it's something we're continuing to work on. Sure. But I didn't even know that statistic, to be honest with you. Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah. But I'm start like I'm starting to learn from teammates around me in this in the at this level that just give me little tips here and there, and they've helped. I mean, I again a lot goes to the teammates behind doors that you guys don't even see. Like yeah, just sure. the just the caring and the giving of knowledge. It's it's top tier in this organization. Okay, so. I love to finish these conversations, and this has been so fun with me getting to talk to baseball with you tonight, Austin. And I, I want to finish this with, you know, like we talked about your offensive game. You hit the line drives. You know, you hit the ball the other way. You, you're not that guy that's trying to impress the Rap Soto or the Track Man machine with 500-foot home runs, launch <laughs> angles, and all that. I mean, do you understand what I'm saying? Okay, oh, yeah. so oh, yeah. you have the game that every other kid out there has. You know, there's not very many kids that hit 500-foot home runs, right? So you have the game yeah. that like 95% of every kid that ever plays has, right? But yeah. you have it at a professional level, okay? So this is a great message. So what is your message for all those kids, you know, that have that same game that you do that want to get in your spot? 
I think those numbers, the rap Soto and the Trackman, all that, all of that will be a byproduct of your work ethic and discipline that you put in on a day to day basis. I don't think you necessarily need to go to the root of that right away. I think you need to develop. I mean, we're still all developing in this game and it's cool to see that where you stand, but I wouldn't get lost in it. That's a, that's a tough rabbit hole to come back from, especially this day and age when that's what they're pushing. But just, I mean, keep working, man. There's work ethic. Work ethic is a dangerous thing if you can do it on a day to day basis. So I got to say, I mean, yeah, work ethic. That's work ethic, work ethic, work ethic. Fantastic. Okay. So the, one of the first times I messaged you and congratulated you on a good game, got a really cool message back that I was like, wow, that's really neat, man. That, that's my kind of guy right there. Your goal is a Dodger. I say win a World Series, man. Ah, I mean, I there we go, the, man. That's got to be the ultimate goal. I mean, if you're not, <laughs> if that's not one of your goals in this game, then you're going to, I mean, it's tough. That's tough. But chasing yeah. that ring, aren't you? Chasing that ring. <laughs> exactly <laughs> you know, I was thinking, I, <laughs> I was, th- I was thinking, okay, well, I'm going to get, hey, thanks. You know, well, it was a tough battle or, you know, and I got, hey, just chasing that ring, man. <laughs> <All right. laughs> that's the motto. That, that, that's that the, motto the motto right there. Yeah, <laughs> man. Very cool message. But hey, Austin, as you can tell, this has been a blast for me. Very, very fun to get to talk to a guy like you. I cannot wait to continue to watch uh, your progress throughout this organization and how you grow through through the Dodgers organization as a Dodger. So, Austin, thank you so much for joining. Had a great time. Thank you for having me.